I'm looking forward to when we don't have to switch this little lapel mic back and forth between that music stand and my shirt. For those of you that have been with us um, through this time, you know, today, like right after the first song, our rhythm, our online rhythm has been to give an offering. Um, but today, this week, I've been compelled to do something different. If you want to to give an offering, God bless you. We'd love for you to support the mission and vision of our church. You can do that online. But this morning, given the events of the last few days in our country, I want to call us to pray. I want to call us to pray. In Romans chapter 12, if you study the Apostle Paul and how he's written, he lays out a theological position and then he unpacks it afterward later in his letters on the implications of the theology that he has shared. And so for 11 chapters in the book of Romans, Paul's laying out this incredible theology, like absolutely incredible, the glorious picture of the gospel. And in Romans chapter 12, uh, uh, Paul kind of turns and says, all right, this is the implications of the theology, because all theology, if it's properly understood, is practical. Our theology informs how we live. And in Romans chapter 12, in the kind of this section of now, I've, I've shown you the greatness of Christ, and now here's what we do about it. Here's what Paul writes in Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 15. He says, let love be without hypocrisy. Detest evil. Cling to what is good. Love one another deeply as brothers and sisters. Take the lead in honor one another. Do not lack diligence and zeal. Be fervent in the spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, be persistent in prayer. Share with the saints in their needs, pursue hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Right now, all over our country, our African-American brothers and sisters are weeping. The scriptures say that we are called to weep with those who weep. They are weeping. George Floyd was a man made in the image of God, an image bearer, infinite value before God. And he was killed and murdered. And it's not okay. It is not okay. Before George Floyd, it was Breonna Taylor. Before her, it was Ahmaud Arbery and countless others. It's not okay. People made in the image of God, infinitely valuable. It's not okay. A couple of weeks ago in our Wednesday evening Bible study through the Minor Prophets, right after the news broke on Ahmaud Arbery, where he was hunted down. We were in the book of Habakkuk. The book of Habakkuk has the prophet looking out at Judah and how Judah is living, how the people of Judah are living. And he says, how long, Lord, must I call for help and you don't listen? Or cry out to you about violence and you do not say, why do you force me to look at injustice? That's been the emotion that I've experienced this week. But it, that's the emotion our African-American brothers and sisters like experience every day, not just when one of these tragedies happened, but because of all of the collective tragedies that have happened where 
people have denied the image of God, the infinite value of our African American brothers and sisters. It's not okay. And I won't stay silent. We can't stay silent. Because the scripture calls us, he says, let your love be without hypocrisy. And love that doesn't act is hypocritical, and it's empty, and it's worthless. The scriptures call us to let our love be without hypocrisy, to rejoice with those who rejoice, to weep with those who weep. How does the church of Jesus Christ respond when we see injustice? Knowing that the scriptures call us to act justly, to love faithfulness, and to walk humbly with God. How does the church of Jesus Christ respond to the wickedness of racism, to the injustice in the world? We weep with those who weep. Here's six points. If you want to take these down, they're not on the screen. We pray. We cry out to God. We pray. We pray. And we weep. We pray and then we weep. And then we examine our own hearts. We examine our own hearts. The scripture is constantly telling us to examine yourself. I mean, the Christian walk is a life of examination. Lord, is there anything in my life that you are unpleased with? God, reveal the impurities of my own heart to me. We pray, we weep, we examine, and as we examine, we repent. Because that examination will un undoubtedly, for all of us, lead us to repentance. And then we speak. We use whatever voice we have, whether you're my nine-year-old son, Dylan, or whether you're the pastor of the biggest church on the planet, you use your voice to speak. When we see injustice in the world, we say, it's not okay. And it cannot continue. And we act. We act. We let our love be without hypocrisy. We have to speak and we have to act. We have to do something. The sixth point is that we, we point people to Jesus and the power of the gospel to change people's lives because I know how the gospel has changed and shaped my life we point people to the gospel the good news of Jesus Christ that Jesus God God the Son pre-existent before the world took on the form of a man, came in the likeness of man, became a man, emptied himself, came to serve others, died a death on the cross, paying the penalty for the sins of the world, for all who would believe, for sinners like me and sinners like you. And on the third day he was raised from the dead by the power of God, and he sent his Holy Spirit to offer life to all who by grace alone, through faith alone, would believe would commit their lives to Jesus. We point people to the glorious truth of the gospel as the only hope. The only hope. How do we speak? We point people to the gospel. We condemn wickedness in our streets and we condemn wickedness in our heart and we point people to the gospel as our only hope. We have to do something. We have to do something. Let's pray. God, you are so good. And we love you. God, I pray. 
Father, I pray for the church to rise up in the power of your spirit and your word. I pray for each Christian that makes up those churches to raise up in the power and the spirit and the power of your word to speak and to act and to point people to the greatest hope in the world, the glorious truth of the gospel. It's in Jesus' name.